Here's an interesting little radio that I just picked up. This is a Graymark three-band regenerative shortwave radio kit from the early 1970s, or that's what I'm guessing anyway. We have controls for on-off volume, regeneration, band spread, and of course the tuning dial. This is a three-tube radio which consists of a 12AT7, 50C5, and 35W4 vacuum tubes. And the way you select bands on this radio is by plugging in one of three plug-in coils for the band you would wish to tune in. It's just an octal tube socket type base and it just, you just, and there you go, just like that. And this tunes the standard broadcast band plus two short wave bands. Now this radio does not work and I knew it didn't work when I bought it so no surprises there. And right off the bat I can see one reason why it's not working. Right here there's supposed to be a binding post for the antenna connection and this and that binding post is supposed to be insulated from the chassis. Well they've got just a, a screw going through the chassis which is essentially shorting the antenna input to chassis ground which is not going to work. That would obviously kill reception. And looking under the chassis I see several bad solder connections and just overall sloppy construction. And I also see some melted wire insulation from the builder of this kit getting careless with the soldering iron and letting it touch the insulation of the wiring and so I'm I want to try to correct some of this sloppiness if I can and here's the instructions and all that that came with the radio and see what else we got here there's a fiber washer that was in the box which was probably the original antenna binding post insulating washer and a nice big piece of solder that was laying inside the box. But anyway, let me dive into this thing and see what I can do to it and hopefully get it going again. I have a feeling this is one of those radios that probably never worked from day one and the original owner just got disgusted and threw it in a box and that's where it sat and until it came here. So let's see what I can do with this okay two more problems that I found is a shorted tuning capacitor and this band spread control you can see it's loose and needs to be taken apart and fixed so let's fix those problems and see if we get any signs of life out of this okay I've now removed the band spread control which was shorting actually it still is shorting I'm gonna have to repair it but I can also show you that the tuning capacitor is has shorted plates see how well I can do this one-handed now let me turn the tuning capacitor Yep, you hear how it's doing. That indicates shorted plates on the uh, variable tuning capacitor. And it does the same thing on this connection right here on the other section of the tuning cap. Wouldn't it be a lot easier if I just get another clip lead? But yeah, you get the idea on the, on the problem that we're having here. So the tuning capacitor is definitely going to have to come out and be repaired and look here this wire that was originally going from one section of the tuning cap to the band spread control was not even soldered correctly here look here as you can see it's not even soldered it's just moving very freely so yeah whoever built this probably didn't have a lot of experience with a soldering iron and I'm probably going to have to pretty much go over this thing from one end to another so pretty much it'll be like me uh, rebuilding this thing 
Okay, here's the tuning capacitor removed from the set. And I think I got lucky on this one. I found one plate that was slightly bent. And as you can hear in the background, no continuity buzzer going off. Okay, stay on there. Okay, no continuity buzzer going off, so that's good. The tuning capacitor is fixed. Now all I need to do is clean these connections up and resolder everything. And here's one of the leads that went from the tuning capacitor to the band spread control, the one that really wasn't even soldered. And one other mistake they made by not soldering it well, there was too much exposed wire coming off of the terminal here. In situations like this, you don't need exposed wire here because that could this lead could become bent or short out to another connection, and then you've got problems. You don't want any you don't want any exposed wiring when soldering a lead to one of these connectors here. Okay, we're starting to run out of time, and as usual, this video is getting longer than I would like it to be, so I think we're going to call this part one, and I'll do part two later. But, like I've said before, this is pretty much going to be a project where I go through the whole radio and I'm sure I'm going to find many more problems that need to be fixed. That's the problem when you're working on a kit radio. Many of these kit builders were not very experienced and they did a rather sloppy job of building these things and as a result they either don't work at all or they don't work for very long. So I think once I go through this and fix it back correctly this thing will probably work for from now on probably okay thanks for watching and part two will come along shortly